I'm actually going to dry brush, which means I'm going to make dry scratchy paint appear. And so that means I'm going to go on here with a pro round, this yellow banded, banded round, and flatten my brush. Flick on a paper towel. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in streaks of my dark. And that'll do a couple of things that will make it look a little bit more natural. It will help my shade float out a little bit better. And I'll do some other things, I'm certain. Just kind of spreads the, the black green without spreading it, if you know what I mean. using the feather light touch but these are designed to fit just a standard um, 10 inch clock okay I'd like to talk to you today about our um, revolutionary way to paint a clock okay so what we have is we have some standard things which are clock stencils we have them with Roman numerals and we have them in um, different formats of Roman numerals this is one that I've already used before I don't know if you can tell what that is with all my mess on top. But these are designed to fit just a standard 10-inch um, clock. Okay. Unfortunately, our material doesn't go bigger, so we can't offer a bigger clock stencil unless you decide to put it on a clock and have the band around the outside be part of the clock design, which is perfectly acceptable. So, But if you choose to make something bigger, and like I've had had a lot of success painting um, up to like 24 inch clocks um, in my in my painting career. So let me show you what we've got. So what you can do is you can take our clock compass tool and for layout you can put a pencil right in right on in here. For layout what you'll do is you'll choose, these are numbered over here on the side, um, 5 inches is a CD clock or 4.65 is and it goes 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. So this is a 12 inch clock and see my band goes all the way out on this row. And each of these little things is a, and I've got all kinds of things in my way, each of these little holes becomes a compass. Okay, and you just rotate that around, and now I've got an 8 inch band on my, whoop, that one caught on my palette. Okay, 8 inch band. And the other thing that these are, is these are um, minute hand markers. Okay, so you can actually mark where your minute and your um, hour hands go, not your, so your minute marks and then your hours go. Okay, so I can totally have all my marks on there. And then the next thing is, is like if you want to paint a round thing, round things are really hard to paint, right? We all can agree with that one. Um, so I've messed around with stretchy tape and some other things like that, which is all fine and good, but um, what we discovered is if we came up with overlapping um, banding stencils that these would work just as good and then you can stencil on your roundness. Okay, so the way that this is designed to work is this is something that you're going to overlap and it has um, measurements out here. So this is 6 inches, 8 inches, 10 inches, and on and on. And then this one is 5 inches, 7 inches, 9 inches, 11 inches. So it's on the odd and then this one's on the even. So you need the A and B to do both. And we have them in different sizes. So you same thing, you go over here, and so say I want my band to be right here on the 8 inch mark. What I'll do is I'll take my stippler, and I'll stipple, I'll move it around, I'll stipple, move it around, stipple, and continue until I get all the way around. The neat thing about this is, is I can do my outer band, I can do my inner band, I can do um, all the decorating that I want to do. Okay, so that just makes it, and then I can if I have something that comes on a on an even or you know it's an odd size, and I just switch to my evens or my odds to whichever way that goes. And we've got these. This is a one eighth inch band, and this is a three eighths inch band. So that's a really good heavy size. And you can see that when you line your holes up at the bottom, they overlap. Okay. And then we have um, quarter inch bands. Okay, same thing, there's an A and a B. Then the other thing that we've come up with is a check band. Okay, so what we've got here is a lot of times it seems that clocks have checks on the outer bands or on the inner bands or whatever. And don't forget, this is just for clocks. These banding stencils can be used for any round surface. 
including all your Lazy Susans, um, just plaques, things like that, circles within a square, um, your details, that kind of thing. So this is a, let's see which size, a quarter inch um, check stencil. So what this will do is it will allow me to put checks that are evenly spaced. So I would use my quarter inch banding stencil. Okay, and is this the one that will get me to my edge? We use our quarter inch banding stencil, stipple, 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 and get our, our um, color on there. Then we switch over and say I did that in cream, and then maybe I want some light green checks. So then I would stipple on top. I'd line it up with the ones that I stippled, and I'd continue on around. So you get so many variations. The other things that you run into is having the numbers. So we've come up with um, different sizes for these um, Roman numerals. And so we've got them from nice and petite all the way up to very, very large for the largest size box or any other project that you want to do. And we've continued on into really micro sized, so on the little six inch size. So this is something that you could do. Like maybe this size clock is pretty darn good for that. Okay. And I want some crackle to show through. I'm going to use the ultra extra thick. Um, Let's see what this stuff called. Sorry, adhesive sizing. And for this is for gold leaf. And I'm going to put this on here and there. And you don't want to skip this step because it really looks pretty showing through. And it's going to be um, not garish and not um, too strong. You want to definitely have some random placements of this. Get some out to the outer edge. And then we're going to allow that to dry. And it's going to be sticky. It's going to get nice and uh, yucky sticky. Okay, we're going to make sure to smooth out any standing stuff. And it's going to dry about maybe 20, 30 minutes, and then it will be clear. And I'm going to go put this in a well-ventilated little area while I'm waiting for it to dry. All right, I'm going to slip slap honey brown. And you'll notice it's the same color as my wood, um, basically. But what I'm doing is, um, those of you who have, like, some other color, then this is part of the directions. So I'll just go ahead and do it. And I'll do this in between my puddles of stickiness, which are now clear, if you'll notice. And I don't really have to base coat it all the way, but just get some on there. And as soon as that dries, then we'll go ahead and put our gold leaf on. The gold leaf comes in a little book, and it's separated by these um, pieces of tissue. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to lift it gently. Okay, and it's very, 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 very thin. It's actually metal um, pieces. I'm going to use a puff to go ahead and blot it down, and then you'll just kind of rip that away where it adheres, and then you'll use the next piece to stick to that. And then you'll tear that apart, use the next piece, and so on and so on until you have all your sticky stuff covered. And anything that's extra you can keep and you can sprinkle on for an even more um, interesting decorative effect. So I'll just go ahead and get all my things done, and I'll show you how to take off the excess. Okay, so over a trash can or some other um, saving the particles receptacle, you're just going to buff off with your puff. Okay, and that will give you, look at how beautiful and cracked and everything that is. Look how shiny. So awesome. All right, next with weathered wood, which is a crackle medium by um, Decorate Americana. We're going to um, put this crackle medium on with a dampened but very squoze out um, sea sponge. Weathered wood is a time, not a time. Weathered wood is a chemical um, cracking system, meaning that I can put this medium on here right now and then in a year from now put paint on top and it will still crack. Some crackles are time sensitive, meaning that if you don't get to it within 30 minutes, then your time, your window of opportunity is over. So what we're going to do is we're going to just put this on here and there with our sea sponge. And we want it nice and thin, so don't, um, don't pile it on. 
because it'll give a really pebbly, icky kind of texture. Now the texture will look really awesome underneath the pineapple, so don't be afraid of getting it all over the place. Apparently my sponge is really soaking this up. Okay, now I'll let this dry. I'll look for anything that's high. I'll let this dry until um, it's just like hard to the touch. Okay, I'm going to apply my tacket um, over and over, which is a repositionable stencil adhesive. And I'm going to apply it with a jumbo dauber and over in an old um, turned inside out grocery shopping bag. And then I'll just pounce, pounce, pounce all over and I'll thin it out, make sure that I'm not getting too chunky, otherwise we leave um, a bunch of pebbly texture and that makes the stencil not be as clean as it could. So I'll just go ahead and put this all over it and let it dry till it's clear. And this will stay sticky even after you wash it. So you can wash it with soap and water and then when it dries it becomes sticky or stays sticky. And it's just like a giant post-it note. So oh, make sure that you peel this off your plastic and let it dry someplace where it's not going to adhere itself to anything. And don't ever lay it on paper. Um, tack it over and over again. Really likes to attach itself to paper. All right, I've got my clock on an easel that is um, a Lazy Susan with some non-stick bartender cloth on it. And I'm going to use my number one oval glaze and we're going to slip slap. Slip slap is a series of X's. Okay, I'm just going to kind of do that. But there's a trick. This is weathered wood. And weathered wood, if I work in this area and kind of piddle around, I'll lift it up and that chemical reaction that's going to be happening is immediately going to get disturbed. So I have to get in and I have to get out really quickly. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to pick up with kind of giant scoops two colors of paint. I've got desert sand and I've got bleach. Desert sand and bleach sand. Oh, I've got the sandy colors. And then I'm going to lay this down and just get the heck out. Notice I'm going in all kinds of different directions, kind of traveling around. The reason I'm doing that is I don't want to create um, lines and patterns. And I really want it thick because I want really big cracks. The bigger I paint, the bigger I put the paint on, the bigger my cracks will be. And I don't want to over mix it. I don't want to blend it. Okay, so we're just going to go all over the whole thing with the same-ish thickness. Okay, if you want to reduce the size, just do it really thin. And I'm kind of patting and not quite slip slapping, but I'm kind of pat slapping. I don't know, that doesn't sound right because my name is Patty, so. But yeah, we're just kind of going side to side, changing our directions and stay out of the wet stuff. and try to do your overlaps like where the paint is just freshly put down really quickly okay there's some different ways that you could apply crackle you could totally um, sponge it on you can um, put it on in a row like in stripes so that that way you have um, a pattern there's just like pay attention to some different ways you can get some really cool techniques I've got just a lovely, lovely faux finish on this. I'm going to do this so that you can see the reflection of the gold. That just adds just a luminescence to the crackle, but yet it doesn't overwhelm it with like gaudiness. It really, really is very cool. Okay, so I'm going to take a mist it, and I'm going to, I've got some water in there, and I'm going to put in a couple drops of paint. And I'll plug it with my finger. And shake it up real good. Okay, once I get it all shook up, I'm going to test it to see if I'm getting the color that I want. Okay, and there we go. So see how that's going to spray some brown liquid. And what I like about the mistits is they're really um, very good about um, spraying super super fine. 
you're not going to get a, a mouse clean a spray from any other detailer. Okay, I'm going to stand up. And then what I'm going to do is with my Lazy Susan here, I'm going to figure out where it's spraying. Okay. And I'm going to get those edges. Okay. And actually, I'll just go over the whole thing. And then I'll hit the blow dryer. And that's going to give me another layer of mottled looking stuff. Okay, I don't that I don't like that it's not dark enough. So I'm going to take the end of my round and drop the paint down in there. I think a lot of it left on my finger. I'm kind of stir it around just a little bit, and then also shake it. Now you want to wash these out and let and spray them out right after you get done. Okay, that's a little bit better. I don't know if you can see how fine this is. Okay, so see little microscopic specks. That's what we're after. All right, now I'm going to jockey this around and look for where the pineapple is going to go. All right, so my pineapple is going to go right there underneath this area. Okay, so if there's something I don't like, like I don't know if I'm a fan of how big this crackle got right here, then I might go ahead and plan for the pineapple to sit there. Okay, and I can look through the stencil to make sure that I like what I'm seeing. I'm going to line it up on the circle for the clock, and then I'll press it down. Oop, i got to go wash my mist it up. Okay, get it all pressed down, and, and you're going to get a dumb stippler. And we're going to use asphaltum. Let's see if you like that color. And we use a paper towel. And we want a really dry um, stencil. We want a stencil dry or with our paint dry. We don't want it juicy. I'd rather have a couple of layers and have my lines really, really crisp for a really professional clock than, um, than try to rush it and get it all done in one fell swoop. The finer the thing that you're trying to apply through a stencil, um, the finer your tools have to be. So in this case, I'm using um, a dome brush instead of a flat stippling brush, and I'm not using any of the daubers that are foam because they'll kind of make a mess out of stuff. Okay, now I'll peek under, see how I like it. Yeah, I think the color would be great. All right, I've gone over mine two times. I'm gonna go ahead and sneak a peek. And look at how awesome that is. Not even a single little blurb anywhere. That is amazing. Okay, so now we've got the basis of our clock. Um, we've got our numbers on there, and now we need to do some color, and we need to do some other effects. All right, we're gonna go with our little piece of graphite paper, and we're gonna trace our leaves. I'm going to make sure I'm showing up. Yeah, I got a new piece of graphite, which means my leaves are going to be pretty dark. But on this crackly background, it's going to be difficult to see my pattern. I'm using my Ghost Writer, which has a roller ball and a comfort grip. If you've ever had pain when you're tracing, then you will be very delighted to try one of these. Okay, I'm going to get my leaves on there with Hauser Medium Green. And I'm going to use a little bit of water in my paint just to make it more washy and a little bit more aged looking, botanical kind of. And I'm going to allow the details of the, of the crackle and stuff to show through. And I'll just use a round brush. and see how the texture is going to come through those details. Yeah, 
keep your brush upright. Blot it if you're doing a wash to prevent all kinds of surprise water happening. And then I'll do the same thing up here. Okay, I actually have changed my mind just a little bit. I'm going to use Cocoa Plus Hauser on the leaves and I'll just rebase these. I think they're just a little bit too vibrant for my palette. And so I want to tone them down and have them be a little bit more toned. If you don't want your letters showing through, what you can do is you can just go into, say, something like just the cocoa or the desert sand. And where there are things that you don't want to show through your leaves, like the letters, you can just go straight on through them and base them before you get to them, and then they won't, um, they won't bleed through. Notice how choppy and blocky that is. It's not a problem. And then we'll go into cocoa and we'll just base this whole pineapple. And you can keep that also choppy, blocky, and see through. Alright, while I'm waiting for things to dry, I'm going to shade with a giant angle brush and asphaltum right inside. Be a little strong. inside that band. If you lead with the toe of the angle shader, then it makes um, a lovely um, C stroke or circle stroke, if you will, circle shading. Whereas if you try to pull it straight, you end up um, with ridges and lines and things like that. So you just push the toe towards the line you want it to make. And it does it really easily and really well. Okay, so we've got that. It just adds a little bit of um, depth right there. Okay, and then I think we're going to want some more of that out here. The artist buddy would be a really good tool right now, but I didn't pick it back up. This nonstick mat that I have working down here seems to be doing a really terrific job of sliding along. Okay, I guess I got all the way around. Okay, so now we've got the bands looking a little bit deeper. Okay, and I think since I can still see the pattern for my leaves, I'm going to go ahead and build this um, project from the leaves forward instead of from the pineapple forward. Alright, get you in a little bit closer. We're going to use a short bright brush, which is a brush that is awesome for control when you're shading. So I'm going to side load and look for areas that are overhanging each other. Okay, and I'm cutting right through my wet border. So I'm going to bring a bridge over. This is an acrylic thing with little feet. And now I can be on top of my project without putting my hand through my, my wet stuff. Okay, so where things turn, we want to shade. Okay, I pulled into a little bit of black green there. I think that's way too big a leap right now. So I'm going to go back to evergreen, and I think I'm going to put a little desert sand with my evergreen. It's looking a little bit electric. So anywhere where things are on top of other things. Or where things flop over other things. If you need to reapply your pattern, that's perfectly fine. The 
this just establishes where things go. Can't tell where that thing goes. When you're using a short bright, you want to be a little bit drier than you normally would be with a with a longer flat brush. See how this just starts um, showing you where things go. And now I'll look at my pattern, because this guy right here flops. There we go. He's in front. A little flip over. And I'm just brush mixing some of that desert sand into going on over here. Something's happening down over here. And, okay, you're a dude. And you're a dude, and I feel like I ended up with an extra dude in there. So here's what we do with that as we just go into our desert sand. Oh, you know what I was mixing? Um, not desert sand, but cocoa. In with my, um, in with the evergreen. Let's just go carve out some more of that white space that we lost. You can always fix things by using your paint. If you can take it away with paint, then you can certainly put it back in with paint. Okay, this guy over here in the upper corner there. He's a flipper. And he should have a nice base as well. It's a flipper. So now I can go into the black green with a really nice dry float. And now we'll tuck things down into the corners. Make things kind of nice and deeply dark where they disappear in behind things. Okay, so right where this guy goes into the base. And I'm not using a really big float. Walking that up just a little bit. Try not to connect all those things that are deeply dark, because if you do, then it'll just kind of turn to mud. Okay, let's see. Notice over here I've just got kind of a muddy little mess. Okay, so I'm going to define it with my paint, and that will help the mud clear. Some strange thing. What's going on over here? Okay, so he is 
just behind. Oh, and he's got all kinds of nests going on right there. I see what's going on. So once again, I have a line there that just doesn't really, doesn't really, really go there. So I'm going to go into my cocoa, and I'm going to grow my pineapple. And I could maybe even grow the uh, the background again. Can expand things that need to be expanded. Okay, starting to get a little bit of detail. When your brush starts kind of splaying out a little bit, it's time for it to take a bath, so rinse it out. This guy needs a little haircut. I'm not going to let it turn quite as soon as the pattern wants him to turn. some of those. And this guy, he gets a little bit of a shade there. Hmm. Okay. So I'm thinking, now we'll highlight. Okay, I'm actually going to dry brush, which means I'm going to make dry scratchy paint appear. And so that means I'm going to go on here with a pro round, this yellow banded, banded round, and flatten my brush, flick on a paper towel. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in streaks of my dark. And that'll do a couple of things that will make it look a little bit more natural. It will help my shade float out a little bit better. And I'll do some other things, I'm certain. Just kind of spreads the, the black green without spreading it, if you know what I mean. I'm using the Feather Light Touch. And I think that one where it flops over is going to be a little bit of, let's give him some dark back there. He needs a little liposuction, I think. We're going to highlight our leaves with green, um, Hauser Light Green. So we'll just pick a side and highlight. So we want to highlight where things flop over because that's going to be bright. Once again, I'm using my short bright brush. And I think I kind of did that a little funny. So it's just those little high points. I'm going to go into green tea next. 
And he's going to make this just a little bit chalky. I'm going to be careful of that. Some of these inner inner things are going to get highlighted. I'm going to go green tea plus um, antique gold. And that just gives us that little bit of warmth in there. All right, we're going to line all of these um, little bracked things with Hauser Medium Green. Have some water in your brush. It's going to do a couple of things for us. It's actually going to keep our pattern on there and it's going to add just a little bit of green throughout the pineapple. I'm using a tiny little pro round. It also is going to hide our graphite lines a little bit. It doesn't have to be a perfect highlight. You notice I'm just kind of sketch lining. This isn't like a line lining, this is just adding some color in there. Alright, I'm going to dry brush with my round, flattened in the paint, flick it on my paper towel, flip this upside down, and I'm going to dry brush from the base of these things up. Okay, so we're just getting that little bit of darkening in there. Don't cover the whole thing up. And you want a kind of a, a up and down um, mo moment there. You don't want it to be like um, all in a row. You don't want soldiers. Okay, and see, make sure that you pay attention to where you're stopping and starting. Always flick on your paper towel. We're not going to worry about that green too much. Okay, with a dirty brush, we're going to go into milk, um, into burnt umber, and we're going to strengthen the edges and the base not bringing it out further than the other color was. And what this is going to do is give us a little bit of a round form to our pineapple, and so it won't look like a flat pineapple. So I'll keep this shading just at the base, at the edges. We want shape following strokes. Okay, see how that's giving that just a little bit of form? Now I don't want it to come too far in. Because this is a fairly small, skinny pineapple, we want to be careful with our color traveling. <coughs> Bring it up just a little bit more on the bottom. And maybe we could go ahead and shade that inside these underneath these upper leaves. And maybe a little bit more up there. For 
stuff disappears. I think I'm going to mix black green and the burnt umber to get it like, yeah, stuff disappeared. But I'll let that, um, I'll let the burnt umber kind of take its lead. Maybe we'll give just a little bit of that and really darkly dark to the edges. Just that little touch of burnt umber. I mean, black green really makes a difference. Okay. Okay, using our round small brush, we're going to dry brush again with antique gold, but this time we're going to do it from the tips of the pineapple down. <clears throat> and it's great if they overlap with the stuff that you did below, so don't be afraid of that. I'm going to concentrate this in the center to give it lift again. We're looking for form. This isn't a base coat, it's just some little kind of sloppy lines. It's a very painterly kind of project and what I love about these is that there's no right, no wrong. If you leave a little brush stroke in there, it's going to be just awesome. On the other hand, if you want to float it and you want to make it perfect, you can also do that. So it's, it's an either or kind of proposition. Okay, now we're going to repeat with um, desert, no, that's not desert sand. I want that to be desert sand so bad. That was cocoa, but I'm not using cocoa. Okay, now we're going to repeat with desert sand in just some of these. And now bleach sand. And I'm getting just a little bit chalky. And chalky means it looks like somebody rubbed chalk on it. But I have an answer for that. And this is kind of a universal answer. So what I'll do is I'll take my little short bright and I'll take some antique gold and I'll just go ahead and wash over what I did to give it some warmth. But because it's a wash, it stays kind of bright. Okay, I think I also want to take my, um, my burnt umber. I'm going to go ahead and just round this bottom and pull those leaves into their base. And that's almost a glaze. Just tuck everybody in there. And I think we can go ahead with a little bit of our burnt umber and go into our leaves on top. And that's going to give us just a little bit more unity. And of course, if we're doing that there, then we can go down here with a little bit of that too. And burnt number in this case is kind of our red. So having that little bit of red scattered around in the dark areas is a good idea. I can go back into my bleach sand and I can give it just a little pop. I'm just kind of doing a little diagonal C stroke. Um, C stroke, I'm just a little diagonal chisel stroke. And we can probably bring some of that up into our leaves as well. So just a really crispy, sharp kind of reflection almost. Not 
everybody gets one. You want to kind of leave the eye just a little bit and you want to keep these things in their, in their bright areas. Okay, and probably everybody got one. Okay, but then what we'll do is we'll do the same thing that we did with the other, and that is it will go into our um, Hauser Light Green Plus Antique Gold, and we'll just go ahead and wash some of those back. Give it a kiss of color, and boom. Now Antique Gold by itself. Make some of this kind of come alive. And these guys down here are looking really flat, so we'll antique goldify them. Okay. Alright, we're going to wash our pineapple with traditional burnt um, sienna. And that's going to redden that puppy up. And when, I, when we wash, we wash with a bunch of water and blot on our paper towel. Kind of staying out of that middle area. Once again, go up into our leaves and just glaze and tint them. Okay, I'm not happy with my separation in my um, pineapple bracts things here. So with a very dry chisel loaded brush. I'm just going to accent them. So the float is microscopic and it shouldn't really float very much at all. I don't know what you'd call this. But it is just a chisel, chisel, chisel. I have very little paint on my brush. And I am just making those kind of pop away from each other because right now they are all laying flat on each other and they're making me nuts. starting to look a little bit more popish. We'll do the other sides. Okay. And then we're going to take our round Raphael brush and milk chocolate and a little bit of water. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put, I'm going to draw from the bottom up, we're going to put those little pineapple-y bract things. So they're kind of... Mm, I think I'm going to need a darker color. So I'm going to go with um, Burnt Ember Plus um, Milk Chocolate. And I'm going to blot that guy out. Just kind of squiggle that puppy up there. And that's those little, I don't know what they are on a pineapple. I guess I could go Google it, but I'm not going to right now. If you need it dark, use just burnt umber. And you can squiggle it in. The tip. All right, to bring some kind of pop into it, I'm going to glaze with um, antique gold in just some of these middle areas. I lost a little bit of my yellowness, I think, and I want it back. Okay, and then I think a little bit, I think that it's kind of fun to carry colors around just a little bit. So 
What I want to try is taking my antique gold and a big old, um, just a oval glaze kind of thing. And let's bring a little bit of that into our background. And I really hate that. So, no problem. We just blot it off and tone it way down. Okay, so now there's a hint of it back there, but not very much. Okay, so that was not very fun. So we'll go into our traditional burnt sienna and warm up our colors around the edge. And we'll do the same thing on our outer edge. Just brings a little bit of that red out there. That traditional burnt sienna is a really magnificent color, I think. But by not doing it first and only, we're layering those two colors. And that means we're not getting a big, like, glowing orange look. Okay, I think what I want to do on this outer edge is I want to do a crackle effect. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to find a spot on my palette and find my crackle medium, weathered wood. And then remember that we don't want puddles of it. So I'm going to dry my brush out and I'm just going to apply it nice and flat. But I'm going to do it everywhere this time. Because it's not how much crackle medium you have that affects the crackle, it's how much paint you put on. So remember that. And the crackle medium likes to kind of resist and sit on top. So don't, don't let it take over. Like work it into the surface just a little bit. If you don't get it all the way to the edge, it will not matter. Okay, I've mixed cocoa, hauser, um, medium green, and green tea together. About one to one to one, and I'm just going to pat it on next to my band. I want it nice and heavy, so it'll crackle nicely. I can kind of sort of do a... Um, a liner with the tip of my brush and then come out and pat on the paint. Nice and thick. Alright, we're going to use Burnt Umber plus Evergreen. Yeah, Burnt, yeah, that's right, Burnt Umber plus Evergreen. And we're going to shade. See what happened here with this beautiful crackle? So what, what it did is it shows the cream underneath and that means that it is going to unify the project together. Okay, so I'll just go all the way around this with a very casual float. Okay, I think I want just a little bit of accent with Desert Turquoise. I'm going to go on to some of our leaves. Just give them a little bit of a here and there kind of thing. Might even give it just a little bit in the pineapple. And maybe bit out all 
right, I'm going to use my check stencil, so that's going to get lined up there. I'm going to use it right out here on the edge of my border, and I'm going to use the dark green mix. Now I'm going to want to hold it still, and I want to line it up with my little diamonds here. Okay. And I'll check it. I don't have any tacket on the back, but I think I'm going to be okay. How easy is that for checks? Okay, so then I'll pick it up and look how neat. I love it. Okay, I'm going to pick it up and I'm just going to line that back up and then I'll lay the last two checks over and then I'll continue. Okay, and the best part ugh, of all, okay, so I'm on my last little bit. This is the thing that is completely impossible with a check. Um, this lines up completely wonderfully to finish it evenly. So this is a mathematical formula that um, one of our designers came up with and found or whatever. And he applied it and created this wonderful tool for us. Okay, so we have perfect checks all the way around. They're evenly spaced and I didn't have to think, work, measure, anything. All right, I'm gonna thin my dark green mix, which is the burnt umber and the evergreen. I'm going to get a heavy handled brush and I'm going to totally <clears throat> going to totally spatter off over here on my palette just to get rid of the chunky stuff. I'm going to get back on my artist buddy because I want to go round and round. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to spatter on this outer edge. And that's just going to add one more layer of stuff. Okay, then we're going to go on the inside with a little bit of the thinned turquoise. And I want this to kind of land a little bit strong, so I'm not going to test it off really. Okay, get a little bit of that going, and maybe a little bit out of here. Just a little bit of something, something. And then on the inside, we need to spatter with a little bit of our, um, let's go with just burnt umber. Let's go out in this middle area here. And then let's go with a little bit of black green on the inner. And I think I got a little too much of my teal on there. I like some of it, but I don't like so much. Okay. <clears throat> now go into black green. And I think we need to spatter with a little bit of gold. Okay, we have this wonderful product called Pale Gold Powders. And what we're going to do, and it comes in actually in like copper and all kinds of stuff.
but it's just a powder. And then we will mix it with some gloss varnish. mix it together and it creates this beautiful metallic paint and it's actually real metal powders it's actually real metal fibers I guess you can mix them together and we can spatter with them so I'm gonna thin it down and come over here just gives it a little bit of we don't know quite what's going on there kind of thing and it just really looks cool